Welcome to the Vet Dental Show. I'm Brett Beckman, board certified veterinary dentist, and we bring this podcast to you every Wednesday as a veterinarian, as a technician, as a dentistry team to help you be even better at veterinary dentistry in your practice. We're sponsored and partnered today with the Veterinary Dental Practitioner Program. If you're interested in being among the best anywhere in general practice as a team in veterinary dentistry, I invite you to request an invitation. Just go to ivdi.org slash inv, like invitation, first three letters, inv, so ivdi. International Veterinary Dentistry Institute, ivdi.org slash INV, and we'll get you the information that you need. Chartific looks great. Do you find that clients understand the information you provide, or do you need to go over it in detail with them? I love sending them home with dental charts, but I wonder about the drug logs and monitoring info. And so uh, our Chartific program here, chartific.com, will give you a lot more info. um, But when we put these together and send to the owner, um, it's a pretty complete document that is pretty clear for them to see. Um, It it is set up so um, the dental chart Uh, is the first page where they can see all of the codes, uh, the X's on there, circle teeth. And then the second page has minimal write-up and explanation of what we found and what we did. And then the third page of that document is a key of all of the codes that we've used. So it's very easy for owners to kind of match up those codes and know exactly what diagnosis we found as well as corresponding treatment codes in that key. And then our anesthetic monitoring form simply shows what drugs we gave, the route that we gave them, and then uh, typically every five to 10 minute increments of numbers that we've recorded as far as all of the different parameters that we're monitoring. And I like my clients to see that so that they can see that all of these different parameters are being watched and adjustments are being made as needed based on all of these different parameters. So um, I like my my clients to have all of that information. Um, and then of course we have our picture and radiograph page and then of course the discharge instructions. And the discharge instructions I'll typically print out as well as email to the client so they can read them ahead of time and then they get a copy just in case they didn't get into their email or they're not real tech savvy. Um, so both uh, both types of media there. So it makes it easy for all the clients to be able to have their discharge instructions. So we really um, like having that, that chartific and it's a pretty impressive form um, once it's completely filled out and I get a lot of compliments from human dentists and doctors and other folks that are doing you know, medical reports. Uh, so it's a, it's a really nice, um, easy, user-friendly uh, app for, for dental charting. Uh, Amy, another question you mentioned on your demo sheet that you used fentanyl. Is this something you typically do with extractions or just major reconstructive extensive work? Um, this is going to be for um, mild to or mi- moderate to severely painful patients. Uh, we're definitely going to do a fentanyl patch. That's part of our narcotic uh, going home with our NSAID. And the less we give the owner to do orally, the less anxiety the owner's going to have. And so a fentanyl patch on on there now, that's primarily our canine patients because we now have Zorbium for our feline patients. So our fentanyl patches are are primarily for our dogs and especially those little dogs that have multiple extractions or sometimes full mouth extractions. We want to have continuous pain relief. So even if maybe that first day or even that second day they're not eating great and the owners may or may not be able to get you know, that medication into them orally. We know the fentanyl patch is on there 
and they're still getting a really nice narcotic continuously so we don't have any gaps in their pain management uh, post-operatively. So uh, we use fentanyl patches quite frequently and um, we have really good success with those and, and uh, keeping our patients comfortable as well as minimizing the anxiety for our owners as much as possible as well. All right, Julie writes, uh, we only have the number two sensor for x-ray, and if we have a big dog, what's the fastest way to take radiographs? Um, I only have a number two sensor as well, and my best advice is to practice, get some good hands-on training, and then practice, and uh, it will just uh, be something that's going to happen over time and especially with bigger dogs there typically is more troubleshooting involved whether it's tube head placement or sensor placement and as you become more comfortable in recognizing what's diagnostic and then how to fix that um, then it just comes down to doing it the same way over and over and over again, um, and that will increase your speed ultimately. How long that's going to take? Hard to say. Depends on how much you can practice, what training you get, um, and I would highly recommend doing some hands-on training if you haven't. And our live courses cover uh, dental radiology positioning at length, and so definitely would recommend that, and then go home and practice, practice, practice. Uh, another question, can we use buprenorphine to increase the time of the block? And we used to add a, a, a narcotic to our nerve blocks. We no longer um, have found that we need to do that because it was thought that bupivacaine, which is primarily what most folks are using, um, only had a, a efficacy of six to eight hours post. And uh, we're now finding that it's probably closer to the 24 and in some cases, maybe up to the 72 hour mark. Uh, we're currently using Noceta exclusively, which gives us consistent 72 hours of analgesia. So that's, uh, that's a huge, uh, huge plus for that post-operative pain management. Uh, the most intense pain after any dental procedure is typically about three days. After that, it drops off significantly. And uh, I've had an extraction myself. That's pretty much dead on accurate and our physiology as far as pain and, and our patients are are very similar and so if we can provide you know really good pain management that first three days that is a huge benefit to our patients post-op so um, the narcotic we just don't need to add that because we know that our buprenorphine is lasting at least or our bupivacaine is lasting at least 24 hours so there's no need to give uh, a narcotic at this point depending of the size of the patient is it enough to block uh, only the infraorbital and is it a good idea to bend the needle when we want to uh, do the maxillary molars? So it, it depends on where you're working in the mouth, all right? So in the maxilla, we can do either infraorbital or the caudal maxillary, and it depends on what we're doing in that mouth. So we would do one or the other, and if we're doing just from the third premolar forward, like a canine, then we would just do the infraorbital. If we're doing behind that third premolar, then we'll want to do the caudal maxillary, which anesthetizes that whole same side. So either one, and of course in brachycephalics, we don't need to do the caudal maxillary because their face is so short that an infraorbital will get that whole side. So um, it, it depends. Now, uh, as far as bending the needle to make it a little bit easier to deliver that caudal maxillary, absolutely. And there's a lot of my colleagues that teach it that way. And you can certainly do that to be able to get that uh, a little bit more perpendicular to that palate so that you can keep that needle as close to that foramen as possible. So that absolutely is an acceptable technique uh, to deliver that block. I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you'd like more information about the Veterinary Dental Practitioners Program, please submit to request 
an invitation at ivdi.org slash I-N-V.